Last time uh, we were talking about uh, the physical symptoms, the behavior that reflects the stressful state of an individual and then the psychological reactions. Now, uh, when you make a mix of it, means when you uh, say that in totality if you want to see uh, how stress is reflected uh, by a human being whether it is in terms of the physical reactions of the body, whether, whether it is in terms of certain processes which are you know later on glaringly visible or whether it is in terms of certain forms of behavioral changes. Okay. One important factor that we realize uh, looking at the whole uh, set of symptoms is that there is a sound uh, biochemical regulation process. So, by default, okay, if you say that the muscle becomes tense, if you say that you know, stomach clenches, if you say that uh, one has certain degree of uh, forgetfulness or one has certain uh, inability to concentrate, okay, all of them would be guided by uh, some type of uh, biochemical change that takes place during the state of stress. So, today what we would do, we would uh, primarily talk about uh, the biochemical regulation and our attempt would be to focus on uh, three different uh, chemicals available in the brain, one serotonin, two norepinephrine and third would be cortisol. Thereafter, we will also uh, know look at the uh, prominent brain structure okay, and how uh, the stressful state uh, know is achieved and how it influences our uh, uh, psychological output. And then we would move to two important call syndromes, which are you know talked about very vehemently in the area of stress. One, the model given by Hans Selye. You remember Hans Selye? We had discussed right in the beginning when we were trying to define stresses and stress. So, he gave a model called uh, general adaptation syndrome, uh, which once again has a combination of uh, the physiological mechanism of the body and the uh, psychological output. And then we would be talking about the second important uh, no, syndrome, what is called as the burnout syndrome. Now, serotonin is also considered to be impulse modulator, means a uh, neurotransmitter in the brain. Uh, which has the capacity to modulate the impulses of an individual. Now, what could be the possibilities? First possibility that we have a normal level of uh, serotonin in the brain. Second, either you go in a hyper state, so there is extra secretion of serotonin or there is a hypo secretion, that is there is a uh, low amount of uh, secretion of serotonin. Now, if you have a balanced level or the normal level of serotonin, then you perform your functions uh, you know, as per the requirement of others, the environment and your own self. So, in terms of psychological processes, your thought processes are very clear. You can understand things, you can uh, extract stimuli from the environment, you can uh, think about it very clearly. Okay and then you can execute the task and because you can uh, think rationally because you can execute the task therefore it promises certain degree of social success because you have been able to decipher the environment you have also been able to uh, give the desired response the proportionate response problem comes comes when you have either a hypo or a hyper secretion of serotonin what happens if there is a hyper secretion, extra amount of serotonin secretion in the brain? Response to overwhelming environmental threats. Okay. Whereas, if there is a hypo secretion, it leads to the adaptation to threatening environment. And how these things get reflected? In the hyper state, you show extreme degree of fearfulness. You develop extreme degree of anxiety. Okay. 
there are also obsessive compulsive behavior okay you understand all three of them or you need uh, little elaboration clear okay i'll then i'll begin with the first one then no? say fearfulness you understand no that uh, you are extremely scared of a certain thing and when we say that it is uh, no extreme fearfulness this means uh, that the environment actually doesn't want to you to react that way but somehow no your response is disproportionate in that sense no so uh, if you have to be uh, scared in a given situation okay the le the level of a scary behavior that you reflect basically in the state of uh, hypersecretion of serotonin is a disproportionate response same is the case with anxiety in obsession compulsion basically it uh, no consists of two part obsessive behavior is one part and compulsive behavior is the other part and they are primarily two different but associated operations in the uh, brain obsession reflects a state when you have a single thought that perseverates in your mind okay and usually these are ruminative thoughts okay so thought and then uh, you know you keep on keep on keep on you know uh, thinking about it that is uh, obsession compulsion when it uh, translates into action so compulsion would be compulsion would be the repeated acts but again these are unjustified acts the way there was no point that uh, you keep on keep on thinking about the same thing uh, for a longer time similarly in a compulsion there is no need for you to repeat the same set of behavior okay now uh, obsession would be you know uh, you have one idea or an array of ideas 2 3 4 and uh, you know throughout the day you are lost but understand that this is different from what you uh, consider as immersive learning okay you must have heard this word no now if you are put in a workshop okay uh, in where intense involvement is needed so say one day two day three day workshop where different types of activities are planned there is a final aim that has to be attained but those or the person who has you know designed the whole uh, workshop knows what actually has to be achieved you keep on only participating in the process okay and at the end of it it makes you realize oh good now i feel okay uh, better now i feel why i was doing that in such type of uh, workshop sessions they are primarily designed to uh, give you an experience of uh, immersive learning where you are submerged in the thought and that thought sustains within you for a longer time and finally you gain something out of it that is different here there is no such situation simply uh, no a thought comes to you or there are two three associated thoughts and it repeats in a cyclic order that is obsession and compulsion is repetition of activities a uh, very common examples would be say uh, you lock the door of your uh, room in the hostel okay and majority of us are uh, you know usually uh, what to call uh, drag to the idea that once you lock it you should at least pull it once to check whether it is locked properly or not to that extent it is fine know that you have locked it you are not very sure about either your action or the quality of the lock and hence you pull it once that is fine the problem comes when you start repeating it so lock 1 2 3 and then you say okay locked turn back few steps did i lock it again you turn back and you find it is locked again you go and pull it twice okay these are compulsive acts there are uh, many more forms of compulsions but because it is so nicely ingrained in our behavior that we hardly realize this is a compulsive act 
say you are uh, walking from uh, this lecture hall complex to your hall of residence, you find a small piece of stone uh, lying in the cycle stand and you hit it once, okay. because of uh, its irregular shape the stone moves on the road, okay, but keeps on changing the trajectory of movement. Okay. So, it you know it you hit in this direction, but it goes slightly on the right hand side and you decide to change your path to again go and hit the stone and finally, the stone reaches along with you to your hall of residence. Okay. There was no need for you to chase a small piece of stone and make it also reach your hall of residence, but you do that. you are uh, no <coughs> overwhelmed about cleanliness okay and uh, your whole idea that uh, germs could be there you no know, if i touch uh, places which are uh, utilized by others also and hence i should be much more careful about you know the bacterial infections and therefore you wash your hand all of us wash our hand after certain acts. Okay, you go to the toilet, come back and wash your hand. Before having a meal, you go and wash your hand. But if you keep on washing it ten times, okay, you will find uh, the worst cases of uh, OCN. It is called obsessive compulsive neurosis, or OCD, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. The worst sufferers you would find that they even start losing the surface of the skin but they do not stop washing their hands multiple times. Okay. You are always uh, you know, dragged by or fascinated by the idea that uh, the room repeatedly will have dust, thin film of dust will be here and there. So, 12 o'clock in the night you suddenly wake up okay, and start cleaning your room, again 3 o'clock you wake up and start cleaning your room and you say you know I am very, very uh, you know, uh, fond of keeping my place cleaned. Okay, these are the acts of compulsions. Okay. Uh, why these are two things are plucked together? Because uh, an obsessive thought will certainly lead to a compulsive act. Okay. Therefore, uh, obsession and compulsion are always plucked together and we call it OCN or OCD. But if you have a hyposecretion of serotonin, that is the lower amount of serotonin in the brain, then you uh, show certain degree of adaptation to the threat that you perceive in the environment and hence you become too impulsive, you become too aggressive. Now, if there is a need in the environment for you to be impulsive, it can be understood. If there is a need in the environment for you to be aggressive, it is understood. Okay. But if there is not a need for you to be impulsive or aggressive, still you become so. Take two examples, you are uh, sitting here, okay. uh, suddenly there is a message on your mobile phone, call me and say this is a message from your friend. And you just read it and you keep it at okay, once I am out at a, a given time when this lecture would be over, I will go out and then make a call to him. Say that hey, I was in the class, therefore, I could not you call you immediately. This is what a large majority of us would do. But if you are somebody uh, who thinks that there can be messages from others who would like to me to call. Oh, there is no message, no message okay. and then you find a message and you say I should definitely call. You do not uh, know, think of the fact that there is no need for you uh, to show certain form of behavior. Take one example, you have checked your mail, you do not have any new mail in your inbox, but every few minutes you refresh it as if the whole world is not trying to send a message to you. 
this might not be true. In fact, this is never true. Very few people would be interested sending mails to you and few mass mails would reach you. Okay. You have read the message and now there is no need for you okay, to impulsively know keep on keep on refreshing your uh, inbox, but many people do so. And a large time of their a large uh, know, time that they could have otherwise used in productive activities goes only in refreshing mails. Okay. Take another example, this is the example of aggressive behavior. Say uh, you saw an accident taking place somewhere, you were coming to uh, the lecture hall complex and you saw an accident taking place uh, in the road and then you decide that I should certainly uh, know help this person reach the nearest uh, health center. Okay. And you find know that the traffic is very chaotic, people are not allowing you to know take this patient to the hospital and you think that there is a uh, know urgent need for this patient to be immediately uh, know uh, sent to a doctor and therefore, you show certain degree of aggression. Okay. You shout at people, you scream, you, know, you show certain uh, aggressive act and you say that no you give way to me, because uh, I am carrying a patient who had uh, met an accident and I have to uh, make him reach a doctor within certain time frame. These are aggressive uh, acts which are justified, okay. but imagine a situation you come little late to the class. Okay, you have to make an entry in the row okay, and you suddenly start shouting at the rest, why are you sitting here, if you have come early you should sit on this side, so that I get a proper chair on the other end. Okay, you come early occupy the chair on this side and then okay, instructor had told me not to cross uh, from the front and therefore, I have to cross the whole row, okay. it is so difficult. Such type of aggressive retaliations is not necessary, it is not justified. Okay. But what happens in the state of hyposecretion of serotonin, okay. this is uh, more likely to happen, this is bound to happen, okay. that although there is no need for you to be impulsive and aggressive, you do become that. Okay. Therefore, uh, no imbalances of serotonin will certainly affect the stressful uh, reactions shown by the individual. Similarly, we come to noradrenaline. Again in the case of noradrenaline, we take both the states, the hyper and the hypo state. Noradrenaline is also called as alarm hormone. Okay. So, it alarms you. Little later, we will talk about the general adaptation syndrome and once again, uh, we will refer to noradrenaline there. Now, if you have a hyper secretion of noradrenaline, Okay, it triggers over arousal and a tendency towards impulsive hot blooded acts of violence. And the reverse happens when you have a hyposecretion, the lower level of uh, noradrenaline, where you have a very cold blooded act. Okay. And if you think from a psychological viewpoint, social viewpoint, legal viewpoint, neither hot blooded acts nor cold blooded acts are acceptable. Okay. And therefore, uh, once you have uh, no extra amount of release of noradrenaline in the brain, which leads to you no know, disproportionate amount of uh, you know, uh, arousal within the individual, you are aroused out of nothing. Okay and it leads you to a point where you commit an act of violence, which is extremely hot blooded act. Okay. So, you just you know consider that oh why were you staring at me, although you were sitting in the corner I come and you know, stab you once, twice, ten, twenty times, you must have heard many such situations. No? Unfortunately, in most of the cases we do not have uh, know the actual uh, endocrinological report of what has, uh, what was the mental state 
of the individual and what type of uh, uh, neurochronological state the person was in. Uh, but if you look at uh, different acts of violence, okay, earlier something that we usually think to be visible only in the west, now you have such things happening in India also. I uh, will take one or two newspaper clips when we come to our next module, when, where we would be talking about aggression. Uh, school shootout was not a news in India ever, okay. and most of the school shootout cases we heard about okay, was in the US. Okay. For the first time some uh, I think few months back, there was a news of school shootout in uh, Punjab and it was the first time to the best of my knowledge in India, where you have a reported uh, no, uh, school shootout episode. Interesting episodes, a student shoots a teacher okay, uh, in Bangalore, a student stabs a teacher okay, in uh, Madurai. There are no, many many such a type of uh, news which comes to the forefront nowadays. Okay. Now we do not know or somehow our system is not uh, tuned that way know that uh, once you uh, catch hold of the culprit, okay, have a thorough profiling done including uh, what was the uh, endocrinological state of the individual that would tell you know uh, what was the level of uh, noradrenaline. But at one end you have many such acts okay, which are disproportionate acts, if you have not done your homework and if your teacher scolds you, okay, the teacher does not deserve to be stabbed in the class. Okay. Uh, imagine that situation, no? you do not complete your homework, the teacher scolds you and then immediately you come and stab the teacher. Okay. This is extreme of the hot blooded act of violence that one can think of. Think of the cold blooded act of violence, I do not know if you remember this news, uh, no, uh, I think it is more than one year old news uh, from Uttarakhand, where uh, a software engineer had uh, who had recently uh, know, come back from abroad, uh, because he was expelled from the job there uh, due to all these crunches. Comes here, uh, no, had some tough time with the wife, uh, kills her, cuts her into pieces, goes and uh, buys a um, uh, deep freezer, okay. uh, puts all the body parts, no, the slices in the deep uh, freezer, and then every day he would take one piece out, okay, put it in a bag and then go out as if he is uh, going somewhere or going to work with a bag. Okay. And he would uh, by the time he would come back home, he would throw the bag somewhere at some deserted place. Okay. Now imagine such acts of violence, no? where you kill somebody, then you uh, know just like cheese, you cut the human body into pieces then you plan the whole thing, then you go and buy a deep freezer, you buy multiple bags, because you count the body pieces accordingly, you buy that many number of bags. These are weird type of things that one can think of, no? but this reflects the cold blooded uh, state of the mind of an individual. Okay. So, hyposecretion of noradrenaline leads towards the cold blooded act. The third uh, important uh, chemical in the brain, uh, we had referred to it uh, in the uh, our previous lecture also. So, the third uh, important chemical in the brain is cortisol. Now, cortisol once it is uh, released, okay, it has uh, this uh, ability to make the neurons in the brain die. Okay. So, what it does is that is it starts killing the uh, brain cells, the neurons and therefore, because it kills the neurons, this would mean that the whole neural circuit that we have for different types of functions that we perform, okay, that will have less number of cells now, because increased amount of uh, cortisol and few cells die. Okay. So, initially if you have 16 billion uh, cells, it will starts decreasing. Okay. 
So, every time you have extra amount of cortisol there, uh, you have a reduction in this. This also leads to shrinking of uh, vital uh, brain areas like hippocampus. Okay. Uh, just uh, the next slide would be where we would uh, know see uh, that how uh, hippocampus, amygdala, the limbic system, okay, they play an important role in emotional regulation. So, what we call as your ability to uh, know understand the situation and come forward with a very proportionate type of a response to come forward with a desired and designated level of uh, emotional involvement and reaction okay, are mediated by these structures in the brain. But then cortisol makes the size of the hippocampus shrink. This means that you have a loss of many more uh, neurons, you also have shrinking of uh, certain vital brain areas and this means that you are paying a much heavier price for being in this state of stress. And uh, in terms of behavior, you have impaired thinking, you have uh, no very selective attention that is shown by the individual and overall the individual shows extreme degree of anxiety. Okay. Now, uh, the animations that you see here you know, basically shows you uh, the amygdala, hippocampus, uh, the limbic region of the brain here, okay, which is basically uh, the vital uh, organs in our body, which are primarily responsible for uh, regulating emotions. Okay. We have uh, the uh, pituitary here and the hypothalamus glands here okay. and these are the important structures in the brain, uh, where you have uh, you know, some change in the chemical regulation, the biochemical regulation and then you realize uh, that the stress starts becoming unsurmountable. Now, stimulation of amygdala stimulates the hypothalamus to release what is called as CRH, you know, corticotropin uh, releasing hormone. So, you have a hormone okay, which is released by a hypothalamus gland of the body of the brain and this is stimulated primarily by the stimulation of the amygdala. Now, CRH controls the activity of the pituitary adrenocortical system. Okay. You remember now we were looking at uh, uh, the biochemical regulation and there we had serotonin, we had noradrenaline and cortisol. Okay. So, the adrenocortical system uh, it is influenced by CRH and what it basically does is that it mediates behavioral and autonomous response to anxiety and stress. So, basically stimulation of the amygdala in turn stimulating the hypothalamus to release CRH, CRH in turn stimulating you know, uh, the pituitary adrenocortical system okay, to influence the state of stress and anxiety in you. Now, the if you perceive a stressful stimulus in your environment, it activates your hypothalamus and therefore, CRH is released in the brain. Okay. This in turn stimulates the interior pituitary uh, gland in the brain to release ACTH, you know, the adrenocorticotropic hormone. Okay. And when ACTH reaches the adrenal cortex, it makes the outer layer of the adrenal uh, adrenal gland release cortisol. So, and we had seen know how cortisol influences, it will make your hippocampus shrink, it will you know uh, make your brain cells die, uh, it will make you uh, become only selectively aware of certain things, it will make you over anxious out of uh, know nothing. So, the whole of behavior, okay, you have once again know if you, uh, if I repeat it, no amygdala, CRH, pituitary secretion, perception of threat in the external stimulus, CRH, ACTH, ACTH leading to cortisol release, cortisol release finally, you know, making you very selectively aware, making you very anxious out of uh, nothing okay. and finally, you pay a heavy price even in terms of physiological functions, because you have reduction in the number of the neural connection, you also have the shrinking, you might have the shrinking of the 
amygdala. Now, amygdala as we have been discussing know that it plays a very significant role in terms of regulating our emotions. So, it stimulates uh, the dopamine uh, input okay, to the medial prefrontal cortex, this is the area where CRH also stimulates uh, the uh, cortex and cortisol triggers the negative feedback channel. And therefore, what happens that because it triggers the negative uh, feedback channel, it inhibits hypothalamus, pituitary and the hippocampus activity. So, it is basically like say you have reached a state okay, and gradually you know you come down to a resting state. Okay. So, chemically what happens? The suppression of the LHPA axis, okay, this finally helps you uh, come to the baseline level of the cortisol, but then okay, you have a baseline level, it goes up, it performs certain, uh, you know, it leads you to uh, show certain behavioral inabilities or it gets manifested in certain forms of behavior, it causes damage to your brain and then finally, uh, you reach the baseline level of the cortisol. Okay. Now, once you reach your cortisol level reaches the baseline, you have attained the level of homeostasis. You remember when we were referring to the biological defenses, psychological defenses and socio cultural defenses. No? Uh, in biological defenses, we had referred to homeostasis. So, in terms of stress and anxiety reactions, okay, once cortisol secretion reaches the baseline level after this uh, no, uh, LHPA axis restoration. Okay. This is a state where finally, uh, you have retained a homeostasis, but then before you come to this state, your behavior has already suffered, your brain has already suffered, because uh, finally, an extra amount of cortisol was released there. The problem comes when you have you no know, repeated such uh, situations confronting you and then uh, you know, one two or few such episodes coming discreetly to one's life that is perfectly okay. You know. uh, there would be stressful experiences in life and therefore, that is not a cause of concern. Uh, problem only comes when you have you know, either a sustained phase, where uh, something continues for too long or there could be a state, where okay, you have uh, you know, the repeated uh, type of situations leading to extra release of cortisol in the brain. We now come to Hans Selye's model. Uh, you remember when we started this topic, we did refer to him and uh, he was the person who first you know tried to uh, uh, advocate that when you have certain types of uh, situations in your environment some of the situations that you experience can be interpreted by you as a stressor. And they qualify to be a stressor simply because you realize that the demand it poses in front of you, it is something that you have difficulty attaining that level. Okay. Or uh, you realize that the resources that are available to you and the demand that is made by certain elements in the environment, they do not match. And therefore, you start feeling that resources available to you starts getting depleted. The very fear that uh, you know, the resources available to me uh, might get exhausted, because the situation is disproportionately demanding it, okay, makes you interpret that this situation is extremely stressful. What Hans Selye did was, he was once again looking at the biochemical regulation and trying to associate it with the behavioral reflections. No? So, what I will do is that I will you know, go back to the slide that we had seen earlier, where we had the full set of symptoms. No? The physical symptoms, okay, uh, where you have uh, you know, tension in the muscle problem in uh, the eating habit. So, either uh, you overeat or you do not feel eating at all. So, once again uh, know there is a problem in terms of maintaining that level. 
or uh, no something that you have been uh, well trained for the toilet training I am talking about. Okay. Uh, you still find it uh, very difficult to manage uh, simply because you have uh, no disproportionate type of a bowel upset repeatedly feeling uh, headaches, back aches, okay. uh, the whole tendency of becoming uh, restless, jittery okay. and in terms of other behavior where uh, you have difficulty in terms of concentrating on something okay, uh, which would mean primarily that your attention keeps on fluctuating uh, very repeatedly something that you do not want. Okay. You show a complete degree of uh, your inability to either sleep or you sleep and you have uh, no, all your sleeps are accompanied by frequent wake up sessions. You start reporting about uh, difficulty recollecting things back from your memory. Okay. Uh, you tend to commit more and more errors, commit more and more accidents, something which was uh, no, uh, not at all uh, too demanding at all like say entering into the row, like moving on the street, uh, opening a door, okay. even on small, small steps for which uh, your activities have now become automated, there also you show certain degree of clumsiness okay. and overall minor uh, things upsets you like anything, you become extremely irritated, okay. your irritation makes you, you know, shout, makes you much louder. Okay. And when you start uh, shouting at others, you suddenly have tears in your eyes. Okay. Now, what Hans Sele did was that he looked at this whole spectrum of uh, behavior okay. and then he said that basically there is a situation which alarms you okay associated with uh, the three biochemical regulations we talked about no the serotonin uh, uh, noradrenaline and uh, cortisol okay so you have an alarm reaction in you there is a tendency in you to adapt to a situation or to resist to it means your whole idea is to uh, have a control over the situation and finally one attains a stage when one's, one is completely drained, so you are completely exhausted. So, this was a, a trifurcated stages of the stage of stress what Hansley described as the general adaptation syndrome or what is popularly called as gas. So, what happens first look at the graph. Okay. Now, you are running at a baseline level the straight line uh, that you see in the pinkish area okay, uh, that is the baseline state okay. and then you have uh, no, a change okay. and then you realize uh, that your resistance to your stress starts increasing. So, first you have a decrease for a smaller period and then it starts going up. Okay. And then from uh, this area where you have this uh, no, whole uh, of increase in the level of resistance that uh, yellow highlighted uh, channel there and then finally, you will go to the area of resistance when you your resistance keeps on keeps on keeps on increasing and you come to a state when you cannot handle it anymore and then the downward slide begins and it reaches uh, the dark orange zone that you see there okay, where you finally attain a level which goes far below your uh, normal baseline level. Okay. So, you are completely 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 exhausted. Okay. So, we will uh, now discuss all these three stages one by one. Normal baseline level uh, basically is that uh, the physiological functions of your body, okay, uh, the neurochemical uh, regulation, the biochemical regulation of your body before you experience the stressful state. Okay. This is a state, okay. 
this is a state which shows the normal baseline level. No? So, see usually in uh, our uh, no, recollect your day to day experience, it is not that no a situation comes and immediately within fraction of seconds there is a big change in your uh, reaction. You take certain time, there is a lull period, no? there is a small time that you take finally, because you have to synthesize all your experiences, you have to you know contemplate the whole scenario to understand how uh, stressful the situation is. Okay. We need time to do that and that is the time when you know you are still maintaining the baseline level and then suddenly like, oh my god, the moment you have oh my god you no know, this goes down, but then you say no, 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 I have to do something your resistance starts increasing, okay. you resist to the maximum possible extent reducing all your uh, resources, goes up to certain level and then you say it is enough. So, downward slide begins and a time comes when you say that is the state of exhaustion. So, what happens in the first state, the alarm reaction, body releases adrenaline, we have seen that you know uh, the whole uh, uh, CRH, ACTH and uh, the whole axis how it reaches the baseline level. So, the body releases adrenaline and a variety of other psychological mechanisms to combat the stress and to retain the level of control that one wants to. Okay. So, you are under a stressful situation and your brain starts releasing adrenaline, extra amount of adrenaline is released, nay, 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 nay. something has to be done, has to be done, has to be done. So, adrenaline keeps on, keeps on, keeps on uh, getting released and that in turn makes you feel nahi yaar, kuch to karna hai, I have to do something. Okay. Now, this is uh, uh, in psychology we popularly call it the fight flight response. Okay. Fight response is where you decide ki let me go. I will go and do this, the fight tendency, the flight chodo yaar, you withdraw, okay. that is the fight flight situation. Uh, in fact, uh, you will find great amount of literature available on fight flight responses uh, you know, uh, shown by human beings. The whole of psychology always, always, always has been talking about the fight flight reactions. So. Bio, uh, sorry, um, the emotion regulation also. Uh, you will find large amount of studies looking at emotion, describing whole of emotional reaction with respect to fight flight. Yes, but these are still you know, the broad categories. Okay. Uh, I must tell you that uh, we are not referring to it because it is not part of Hansel's uh, gas model. But if you are interested, uh, the new set of research, okay, uh, which is now indicating that there is a new set of uh, reaction that you see like the fight flight pair what is called as tend befriend reaction and tend befriend not uh, I cannot endorse it that this is what happens because it is still uh, under researched, but tend befriend is a reaction which is seen as of now by uh, the studies which are conducted only in women. So, even though you have to take revenge befriend the person no, instead of fighting, because if you decide to fight say if I consider you to be the source of frustration for me and if I come to fight you, I might receive you know, uh, all the negativities, the consequences might be uh, detrimental for my own self, for my own survival. Okay. So, instead of fighting is there is a, is there a possibility of befriending you and then very quietly you know taking the revenge that is the befriend reaction. Okay. Uh, but uh, this is not part of the Hansel's model, I just thought I will tell you if you are interested you can you know uh, read literature on this also. Not many research on tend befriend reaction, uh, but a huge amount of literature you will find on fight flight responses. Now, you have extra amount of uh, adrenaline secreted in your uh, body and therefore, you decide uh, your body response uh, in terms of the fight flight mechanism. 
what gets reflected in your bodily functions. You have <coughs> tense muscles, you have uh, rapid beat of your heart, your breathing increases, perspiration increases and the dilation of the eye also increases. No? Uh, what I okay. There are beautiful research, you know, uh, uh, I am deviating uh, frequently, but allow me to do that. There are beautiful researches in terms of uh, examining the truthfulness of statements made by uh, politicians or those who are in power depending on the blink rates okay. and fantastic research on uh, especially on uh, the presidential candidates in the US, because they have these debates. No? So, when you are asked questions, when you uh, give your opinion okay, and there are beautiful research on psycholo by psychologists who have no analyzed those videotapes, analyze the blink rates on different topics and say how truthful or untruthful you were. Okay. Uh, this is uh, you know, what is uh, you know, usually in literature people call it reading between the lines. Okay. There is in fact a beautiful paper on deceit behavior, the untruthfulness uh, which says reading between the lies. So, you have spoken uh, 10 minutes of lie in your speech okay. and I am now based on my research investigation, I'm, you have one lie, the second lie and I am reading between the lies. Okay. So, this is just like metaphorically using the same thing, you know, reading between the lines okay. and this is again based on pupillary dilation. So, alarm reaction will show this. Then comes the second stage that is the stage of resistance or adaptation. Now, what happens the body starts making an attempt for long term protection. Okay. Now, further secretion of hormones that increases blood sugar level to sustain energy and raise the blood pressure. So, now in the earlier stage where you had only the adrenaline, okay, now you have other hormones also now being released in the body in higher quantities, okay, because you want to retain the blood sugar level as well as your blood pressure level, okay, these two things. So, the bodily homeostasis mechanism has to be maintained and therefore, extra amount of the hormones starts getting released that is the second phase. No? Uh, you remember just now we had talked about the adrenal cortex. No? So, adrenal cortex uh, produces hormone called corticosteroid right now we had referred to it for this resistance reaction, but what happens that overuse by the body's defense mechanism in this phase can finally, make you susceptible to certain types of diseases, because your bodily resources which otherwise would have served you better in the long run, okay, uh, it has been exhausted, because it has been over utilized in a very small period of time. Okay. So, it is something like a bank saving, how much you withdraw using your ATM cards. Okay. So, if you withdraw say 10,000 every month. Okay, this is still a manageable thing, because say your father has put say uh, 1 lakh in your account or 1 lakh 20,000 in your account okay. and every month uh, you, know, you are withdrawing 10,000. So, you know that you still have resources available as and when there would be a need, I will just go insert my ATM card, withdraw certain amount of money. But in a given situation, you just uh, know go to the ATM machine, withdraw 40,000 cash the maximum possible limit per day transaction that is allowed. Okay. Two days okay, you are left with very minimal amount, three days 40,000 withdrawal the whole thing is exhausted. Okay. So, resistance adaptation is that very stage no, where you have to maintain the level of blood sugar level, you have to maintain the blood pressure level, okay. you have the amount of corticosteroid, okay. because you want still to have control, you are you know uh, still creating your resistance, okay. but then because you are over exhausting yourself in this process. So, you are depleting your resources and then comes the stage of exhaustion, where the body basically runs out of its reserve for 
the energy as well as for immunity and that is the reason why you become susceptible to disease. Now, mental, physical and emotional resources they are over utilized in this phase and therefore, you have suffer heavily for this okay. and the body experiences what is called as adrenal exhaustion means your adrenal uh, gland okay, your adrenal secretion is no more in a position to support you. So, remember a situation that you have achieved okay, uh, where your biochemical regulation okay, has been over exhausted and therefore, you can you consider that although you re need to reach, reach that baseline level you need certain degree of uh, no, the neurotransmitters, but then you also realize that those biochemicals are not available to you in the amount that is needed. The blood sugar level decreases, adrenal becomes depleted, there is a decrease in the stress tolerance level, but what finally uh, it is seen uh, in terms of uh, reflected behavior is that you are become extremely irritated the symptom that we had discussed, minor things irritates you. There is a progressive mental and physical exhaustion, so most of the time you are you know, physically exhausted, mentally exhausted. you become susceptible to illness and there could be a possibility when you collapse. So, it is like say complete shutdown for certain period. So, that is all about the, the general adaptation syndrome which talks about being in a stage of stress where your resources are depleted, biochemical uh, regulations are over utilized leading you susceptible to both the physical as well as to mental problems. When we meet next, we will be talking about the second syndrome, what is called as the boss or the burnout syndrome.